what I told Ben was my problem was basically, you know, I think there is no God. I think morality is transcendent. You know, it's something that humans don't make. It's something we have access to, like math, but it's it's fundamentally uncreated. Start by saying a little about my conversion, which is, you know, it was kind of precipitated by finding the most interesting wrong people I knew and then trying to explain to them when, why they were wrong. And then when that didn't work, reading their books so I could explain in more detail why they were wrong and eventually finding out they were right. Uh, and, you know, for me, a lot of it started with the question of almost, you know, if the eye responds to light in the physical world, and that's what vision is, what does conscience respond to? And kind of playing around with that question. Um, and for me, you know, the idea of weird transcendental truths wasn't that weird. I was a mathematician. I was used to the idea of there being true, beautiful things that were immaterial. Uh, but the more time I spent with the problem of how is it we come to have knowledge of the good versus how do we come to have knowledge of number theory, which to me felt like one of the highest goods. Um, it was a much more complicated question and ultimately it felt like it was much more probable that God existed you know, and the Christian faith was true and that was the reason I had for having knowledge, for having my conscience respond to something the way my eye responds to vision. Kant's big thing is that he wants you to do the right thing out of duty. You know, it's not that you're doing this because you're like, okay, well, strategically, if I don't lie to you, you don't lie to me, I wind up better off, so this is really to my advantage. He's not a consequentialist, and neither was I. Yeah. You know, there's not a, well, we should all just agree on this moral rule because it will make society run more smoothly, and we're all about just easing the way. Nope. Kant no. says it's about doing the right thing because it is right and not because it gives you pleasure, not because it pays off for you in the short or even the long term, simply because it is good and therefore you do it by us. Um, and um, and you know, that problem of it's transcendent and we have access to it. And these last two things were hard to do at the same time. Because with math, first of all, as I told you, no one was giving me any guff about being into math and an atheist, right? Except for Will. Uh, but with math, we can kind of like sneak your way there, right? Like, you know, there are these two mugs. There are the two lenses of your glasses. What's what's with these? How are they the same? They participate in the form of tunis, right? And you can get into Platonism or not, but I found this sufficiently compelling. You could get to two, you could get to one, you could get to the natural numbers, to all of number theory, to everything else that you could look around at the natural world and the, the jump was easy to make, to, to understand the transcendent. But morality, it's harder to make that pitch, right? You know, I can go, I see someone defraud an old lady, and I see someone kick a puppy. Now, these things are not intrinsically the same, no more than lenses or mugs, but they participate in the form of cruelty, right? <laughs> and I, I just couldn't say with a straight face that that's as obvious as the lenses and the mm -hmm. mugs, right? Um, so I didn't, I felt like I, I only could even recognize they both participated in cruelty because I already knew what cruelty was. I couldn't claim that's how I worked it out, right? So I'd lay all this out in front of Ben. And Ben's like, okay, so that sounds like what you've been thinking about for a while and you don't think it works. So you should at least start trying to come up with new ideas. You should have been kind of treading water for a while. So if it's not that kind of, you know, Plato ladder, you know, what is it? And then I just said, spontaneously, I don't know, I guess morality loves me or something. <laughs> and, you know, that, I had to even pause mm. to think what I meant, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was fundamentally the idea that if I can't build the ladder from my side, and I'm not going to, from my point of view, tell a lie and say morality is less what it is, so that I can make it something that I could have grasped for myself, but I have knowledge of it, then the motion must come from the other way around. It's not me reaching up and constructing something. It's morality offering itself to me. John 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus thus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and you do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And Morality as a person? That's the thing, right? You can't talk about a rule book offering, right? A rule book <laughs> falls, right? It doesn't yeah. act. And at the point where you say, you know, I, I believe in the form of the good that is, in fact, a person that offered itself to me, condescending to take the form of a slave. I knew who I was talking about, even if I hadn't <laughs> meant to at the beginning of the sentence. Um, and so it kind of it kind of really happened wow. that fast. And most of the rest of the night was me kind of trying to poke holes at my own idea to see if I believed what I had just said. And then Ben suggesting that, you know, when I did, that we should close out the night by praying night office, listening to Mumford and Sons, and then going to bed because it was about two in the morning. <laughs> and you know, by the time I was walking back to where I was staying, you know, it was past midnight. It was already Palm Sunday that night. Wow. Yeah, I was 